Okay, brilliant stuff. Okay, Roy, how are you? I'm going to unmute you, Roy. I don't want you muted. Okay, can everyone else mute their mics, please? Who's there? Okay. Fantastic. Hi, Roy. Let's see, where's our star guest? Aha, uh -huh, there you are. Hi, Roy. Hi, Fitz. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, absolutely wonderful to see you. Thank you for our guests and honorary business partners who have joined us this evening. We have got an exclusive. Um, this is a big one. It's hard to pin this man down, but when we have the, you know, the joy, the company of him on board of Zoom, it's an absolute pleasure. So Roy Strong, firstly, I'd like to congratulate you on the wonderful achievement on being our first Amethyst star in the UK. Absolutely well done. I'm, round, I'm giving a round of applause for everybody. And I'm sure everyone there, you know, really absolutely were blown away. Um, not only did you surprise us at the UK conference in October with Casper Star, you did it again in November. November, you didn't wait too long before you surprised us again. So absolutely um, blown away. So fantastic stuff. Um, Roy, Mr. Roy Strong, and, and what a perfect name for, you know, the, the type of businessman and entrepreneur you are, because you definitely need a strong mindset. And <laughs> I tell you what, you, 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 you are Mr. Strong indeed. Roy, tell us um, a little bit about your background and, um, you know, how, how, how did this all start for you? Tell us a little about who you are, because some people don't know who you are. Surprisingly, we've got a lot of new members joining every month. They may not be aware who Roy Strong is. And so tell us a little bit about your background and, and where you're from and how did you get started? Well, originally I worked in insurance. Um, I ran an insurance office for the uh, insurance brokers doing specialist cars, American cars, kit cars, and that, all that sort of thing. That's when I, put, when I came into FM. But I have done networking before, and I used to review networking opportunities for Opportunity Magazines in the days before the, everyone was looking at things on the internet. And there used to be the Opportunity Magazines that came through the post, and I used to do the reviews in those of different opportunities. So I knew the way the industry worked. I knew the way marketing plans worked. And I was involved in another company on a part-time scale, really, when I got a um, random email come through from in Polish English. <laughs> um, and it was telling me that a perfume company was coming to the UK. And I've sold perfume before, along with other, you know, other products in network marketing. I've sold different things. But I knew perfume worked. And our new perfume is the, in my opinion, is the easiest product to sell in network marketing because you don't need to know anything. <laughs> you know, it, it's so simple. You get you know, a sample to someone, they try it, if they like it, they buy it. You know, no complications um, with perfume. So, I, you know, I knew a perfume company could work. And I, I met up with Anita, who was looking to launch the UK franchise for FM, and met up at a coffee shop in London. And I saw the um, catalogue at the time, which was in Polish. <laughs> um, no pictures in it at all, just words, but in Polish. <laughs> um, I saw the marketing plan in Polish. <laughs> uh, and Anita at the time, her English wasn't anything like it is now. Um, so it, we struggled a little bit to communicate in that first meeting. But I got the gist of the plan. And I could see that it was, you know, it's, it's a plan that's been written you know, by networkers, because it's actually a, a distributor-friendly marketing plan. Whereas a lot of marketing plans I've seen in the past in other companies are written by the company. And they're done by a company's viewpoint. So they try to pay as little as possible, you know, try to discourage things. Whereas when it's the distributor-led plan, it means it's fair to everybody. There's no breakaways like I've seen in other companies. And people, can, you know, people can actually get earn more than their sponsor does. And they can move to higher levels than their sponsor does. So it's a fair plan for everybody, regardless of when they've joined the business on there. So that's how I got initially started um, in FM. I said it was very different back in those days because it was just perfume as well that we had and just what we, what we would term now the pure, but the other classics at the time. Wow. Yeah. Was you actually the first person to, I understand you're one of the early pioneers. Yeah, I've, got the ID, ID num I've got the ID number number three. Um, I don't think I was actually the third person to join. I think they, they, the way they were doing the ID numbers at the time. But I, I was certainly one of the first people. Um, I, was, I went along to the first meeting that they had down in the Polish Centre in London. And there was, a, there was quite a number of us there at that first meeting. 
Uh, but as far as I know from that first meeting, there's only three of us um, that stuck long term with the business. On that, myself, Irene, and Anna. Wow. So, you know, that must have been a bugger knowing that there was two people in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that, what their ideas are, but it, it, we're, we're the three that are sort of stuck with it. There are others that sort of start to build up and then just drifted off. I understand. Know? Wow. So, Roy, um, you know, the participants, the members are joining like quick fire. We've got 18 on the Zoom this evening. Um, just welcome aboard for those who just joined us. We've got being exclusive with Mr. Roy Strong, first amateur star in the UK. Absolutely so proud and privileged to have him here. I'm going to do a quick screenshot. Um, so everyone put on your best, your best smiles so we can have you use this for your, um, the reason why we do screenshots and record the zoos because you can use this as a marketing tool you can show other people that we have got the best leaders here we've got a company that helps to build leaders very very quickly and i'm talking about 21 percent per local and beyond in three months fast train to success so use this as your marketing tool show other people it doesn't matter who it is don't even your chicken list people who you see as established business people let them know that we've got an amethyst star that earns a month a yearly salary every month literally um, so this is what you need to do. So I'm going to take a quick um, screenshot. So Mr. Roy, I'll put on my best um, Colgate smile for you all and you can all follow suit. I'll do another one. I'm going to do a quick gallery view. So I'll catch you all in the gallery as well. You know how long it took me to work out how to do that on a laptop, and it? So finally, <laughs> I, got the, I got the gist of it there. So wonderful. If anyone's got any questions, um, we will have um, time for questions and answers at the end. Please type in the chat. It doesn't have to be a question. It can be a hi, hello, you're looking great, whatever it is. If you've got something you want to say to Roy or myself, or anybody on the group, let the chats flow. We like, we like reading the chats and the notifications at the end. Or even at the end, if you have a raised hand, you know, I can unmute you if you have something you want to share with us tonight, because we're all learning from each other. So, Roy, now you've told us about yourself. You've heard about your journey. The golden question, and I'm going to come a little bit closer because I'm going to look you in the eyes, Roy, and I can see behind you've got do, don't quit and when yeah. things go wrong. And definitely, this is about not quitting, you know. And I love that the way you've got that just behind your head in the background, brilliant. Um, I'm going to look you dead in the eye, Roy, and I know you always tell the truth. Well, most of the time, I understand. <laughs> Apart from when I'm playing poker, yeah. Apart from when he's playing poker, but I know you always tell the truth, Roy, Mr. Roy Strong. I'm going to say this very, very slowly so everybody can hear me, because this is the golden question, what we all wait for. What did you do? What actions did you take to get to where you are today? I think I've definitely been very consistent, and I've treated it as a business, and I think that's the crucial part to it, is, you know, people join for different reasons. You get people join because they want to buy bits themselves. You get people join because they want to sell to family and friends and earn extra money, and that's all fine. But if you want to seriously build and get reached a high level in the business, you need to treat it as a business. You need to treat yourself as your best employee. And you need to put effort in every single day to develop in your business. Even when days when you're feeling, you know, when something goes wrong or whatever, you need to put on that smiley face. You need to uh, be positive, as I know you are yourself. It. And it's, it's very much... You know, doing that, being consistent on it, because you need, to, as, as you develop, it's not, it's not just being there, you know, for your own business, but it's helping your team to develop as well on there. And, it, you know, if, if you decide, if you sort of think, oh, I'm not going to do anything this month, guess what your team will do? They won't do anything either, or very little. So it, it is consistency. I think it's treating it as a proper business. And it has had ups and downs along the way. You know, you, you know you've been in a, a, a you know, long while like myself. So we, we've seen a lot of different challenges and bits happen along the way on there. Um, so it's not a smooth ride by any means. But, you, you know, it's sticking with it that makes the difference. And by sticking with the business and continuing to develop it, then you will build, it will grow if you're putting the effort in every day. I remember years ago, one of the trainers we had in the early days of FM, I think you might um, remember, you know, old Stu we had, it, he used to say that network marketing is a prey to people with an ever-grown core. And that's, what, how, that's how your teams are. You know, you'll get people come and join and they may do a bit or they may not do a bit and they may develop a team or a team, or, you know. And things will happen and they will, some of them will stay with it, some will drift off. 
but it's building up, you know, it's continuing to develop that growing core of leaders. And that's what makes a difference. Wow. Um, Roy, I'm just picking up on that. And I think you said some very, very um, pertinent words there. Um, I'm just going to see, can everyone just mute their mics, please? Um, if you just joined us, please do mute your mics. Um, now, Roy, I've known you for seven years. <laughs> Believe it or not. It's gone quickly, yeah. I know it's gone very quickly. Um, I've been, uh, been in the business seven years now, and I've met you on many occasions, and I've seen you rise through the ranks. I think when I joined, you were probably Golden Orchid or Diamond. I can't remember. You were probably, around. Yeah, probably, yeah. probably no, around. Well, yeah, probably Golden. Like golden I think. You're Golden, yeah. Golden Orchid. Uh, which is probably difficult for some of us to fathom, you know, you're a golden orchid at some point, and a free percent, I'm sure, at some point when you start. Oh, yeah, everybody, yeah. And at the start of every month, we all start at zero, you know. Exactly. And um, what I've noticed about you, Roy, is that you, you're, you're um, a, a quiet man. Um, yeah. A man of um, not, a few words, I would say, but once you're put on a platform, the words just come out. So you're not what I would say, like me, who's I'm quite flamboyant. I, I will hit the code market, go to salons, talk to people on the street. You're qu quite quiet and reserved. But with that quietness comes a very steely resolve and you're very astute. And in terms of online social media, where you've, I, I think you've really focused on, you're, 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 you're a giant. I mean, you, you are a guru. And, and I've watched that grow. And I remember you gave me some very wise words many years ago. And, um, you know, when I was a little bit reluctant and kind of embracing Facebook and social media, you told me, um, um, you said Fitzgerald. So I know when you said my full name, um, I, knew, I knew this was serious. Um, you said, if you're not on the um, football pitch, then you're not playing the game. And you said, if your business is not online in some form of capacity, then you're actually doing a business on one leg and your business is running on 50 percent. And I took that very seriously. And I think that's where I changed my attitude. So I definitely think there's something very key about your attitude and the way you're going about this. That's kind of setting you apart for many others. Would you agree, Roy? Uh, there's different personality types, as we know. You know, there's, there's a whole training we could do on sort of personality colours. Um, I'm, I'm what's known as a green personality, so I'm very much a, I'm analytical. So I look at things and I look at the sort of trends and things that are happening. And yeah, you know, you're right. The social, you know, even back then we were talking about social media and the fact that it, that's where people were heading, and obviously now it's absolutely where people are. And it, you know, when I get someone join the business. If they want, you know, I said, again, it's different if someone just wants to buy for themselves, etc. But if they actually want to build a business and they say to me, and I've won the other day, actually, they said to me they want on Facebook. What I say to them is, you know, just uh, whatever their views on Facebook happen to be, you know, <laughs> some people like it, some people don't. But in business, you, you can't not be on Facebook. You need to be on there. The same way as you need a phone number, you know, <laughs> you need an email address, it's the reality. So even if someone, when they join, isn't on Facebook normally, I will say to them to you know, set up a profile and I'll say to them, you know, just have me as a friend, as your only friend on there to start with. Just so we can link you in with sort of supports and let you know about things like the Zooms, etc. on there. Because that's, that's where people are. So you need to be where people are and the people, you know, are on social media and primarily on Facebook. So, and it's looking at that and continuing to develop that through, you know, Facebook at the moment is where people are. Will Facebook, will you where people are in five years time? We don't know. There may be enough of, you know, media that comes up that people go on to, or it may be, you know, all done through a 3D animation in your house or something like that. We don't know. So you need to be constantly looking at that and constantly developing and, Work going where people are, you know. And obviously, Yulita came into the business almost four years ago now. And yes, I've taken steps forward with um, technology, but I still wasn't as you know anywhere near where where I am now with it. And it's Yulita that made the difference. She came in and she looked at what you know we're already doing as a team, and she said, basically, what we were doing at the time was rubbish <laughs> in terms of information and things like that. And, the, you know, even the information put out on, the, on social media. Uh, but she didn't just say it was rubbish. She came up with solutions. And that's made an incredible difference um, to the business. And we've worked together to develop the you know, best ways to support everybody and to help new members and everything else. So it's, it's a team effort, without a doubt, to, 
you know, to create what we have done. Wow, I would definitely have to agree with that. The beauty of this company is that we have so many dynamic and fast-growing leaders that, you know, and the beauty of FM is that people are open in, in sharing um, generally. And I can definitely see the impact that Juliet has had. Um, she's been very, very supportive um, with our team in terms of leadership for our team leaders. Um, how, how do you feel? I mean, we've seen the Orchids just pouring out of Team Strong, you know, and it's wonderful it's because yeah. it's incredible because, it, it, you know, it's a celebration for you and your team. But it's also a celebration for us in the vision. It motivates us to say, actually, they're doing well. You know, we can do the same. What can we learn from, from that that we can, you know, also have the similar results? How would you well, say... Well, that's been an amazing year for yourself, Fitz, and, you know, your team as well. So uh, fantastic. It was wonderful. You're in Dominican. Yay! <laughs> hey, Dominican was fantastic. And you know what? It, it was my first one. And I can only say thank you to my leaders and my wonderful business partners. And I'll be going with many, many more of them, you know, for more days yeah. and as the years go by. And those things are so important being on those sort of anniversary trips and rubbing shoulders, you know, with, with those top leaders in the world. It really adds wonders to the business and to your self confidence and motivation. How do you find using incentives and the way social media and would you lead to the, the fast trend to 21 percent how has that had a, a direct impact would you say on the business on your business oh, it's made a huge difference um, especially this year you know we're very very much focused on the in particular the the train to 21 um, but also the other incentives as well and it, if you can show someone how to maximize their income then that, you know and it works for them then they will continue to follow your advice and continue to build so it's showing people when they're first joining how they can get money quickly. And you need to you know, be telling them about the incentives we do. I said the train in particular helps people to get that extra bonus on top of their Magnolia commission in, the, you know, in their first or well, in their second month in the business. So that, that, you know, that can double someone's um, bonus depending on their structure on Magnolia. So it makes a big difference. Getting them to maximise the things like points mania and the smart start as well also helps because that also increases their early retail profit. Get rewarded, you know, by encouraging people towards the high, you know, levels they haven't reached yet. Again, makes a big difference. So it's, the incentives we've had have been this year have been amazingly, you know, good at getting people to to move up through the levels. And we're hoping there'll be similar incentives for next year. I'm sure there will be. Um, and you know when those incentives are announced, then we obviously look at those, you know, analyze them, do the green bit, um, and look at the best way to, to, you know, to help people with those incentives. And I think uh, it's wonderful that you just captured that. And another thing which I which I think is really, really key, is that seeing how, um, when, especially when people post their commissions, and they're posting some wonderful commissions, like from 15% earning £300, 18% they're earning £600, from 21%, you know, they're not just earning like the normal £600, they're earning £800 or over £1,000 on 21%. And Pearl Orchids, not just a Pearl Orchid who's got the, I would say, uh, a fairly weak structure, which is earning maybe £600, but Pearl Orchid's earning £800, £1,500, £2,000, and beyond um, what could you share with us what 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 is the perfect structure Roy um, for, for especially around 21 and Amaranth you know we're, we're going up I what I've been shown um, really if we just put it is that there we are there and at least five five to ten well let's just focus on five five straight legs and under each under each leg five branches yeah I'll, I'll say six um, you say six okay well only because of the welcome home because with the Welcome Home Incentive, it's based on six legs. And we, again, we know we don't know what the incentives are going to be for next year, but I'm hoping Welcome Home will carry on or it'll be something very similar. So Welcome Home is based on the six legs, and it gives everybody the chance to get every single month, if they get the structure right with six legs and 5,000 points in each, get 500 euros extra on top, which is a good extra bonus on there. And that's a, that can be every month. So I would say go for the six legs and aim the, and aim the people you're introducing to do the same thing. But that is six active legs and six legs that are building, not just the first six people signed up. So you're, you're looking for people who are, you know, people who want to build, not necessarily those you sponsor. It may well be a few levels down in the structure, but you're looking for six legs that will be building up. That will help you with the Magnolia money. 
Um, it will help. It will help you have more money when you hit AMRAP than you would with just three legs, because you'll have some outside volume to it. But but it is a little bit of. And I often say this to someone when they first join and they want to build, is what do they want? Do they want position or do they want money? Yeah, which they want first. Because someone can get to Pearl Orchid with just one, you know, 21% leg and 20,000 outside. But they're not going to earn much by doing that. It, or they can get to Pearl Orchid with six legs, you know, one that's 21% and a scattering of upper legs, you know, a good, way over 20,000 and earn much more. So it, they get there quicker if they did it with just the minimum of 50,000 points, but they won't earn as much. So it's worth asking people the question because you'll get people join different, you know, different people. Some people join and they, their prime aim is just the to move up the levels. And their, their money will come later for them. Whereas others, money is more important initially. So that, you know, you need to show them how to maximize their money and they will slow up the plan, but there'll be only more money as they get there. So it's, it's asking people that question of what they want. No, I think you're definitely right there, Roy. And I'll tell you what, the, the, the allure of the position is <laughs> definitely alluring. You know, when you reach 21% and you're Pearl Orchid and you, you know, you've been called on stage and you qualify for the incentives, the Peugeot, and you hit your first anniversary. But hey, if you can have the cash as well to go with it, if you build the right structure, who wouldn't want that? So it's definitely, I think, key that people look at building the right structure. So six legs, guys. Six legs. 5,000 points in each or six legs and as many points as you can in those legs with a 21% leg will maximize um, your commission and that's what we want. And I, I guess it's the lower your max leg, the higher your commission will be. Is that right, Roy? That's right. It's a general rule of thumb, yeah. So you want to try and keep the maximum leg below 60% uh, because that will help obviously with some of the incentives that we have. What I would say though is if you, got, if you join and the first few you know, a person you introduce, one of the first people you introduce, absolutely flies with the business, and your main leg is over 60%, and you rise up to 21, then don't, don't worry too much about it. Obviously, keep, oh, build the volume outside, so you want to keep, aim to get that percentage down. But if it happens to you, then see it as a good thing on the fact you've got a, a very strong leg. You know, when I joined the business, and I was moving up through those early stages, there wasn't any incentives in place. You know, we literally just had the marketing plan. But had there been any incentives with the 60-40 rule in place when I was moving up to 21%, I would have missed them all because my percentage was way over 60% in my rise up to 21%. So it can happen on there. You know, my percentage is way down now, but it was, you know, very high in, that, those, early, in those early days. So it can happen, and sometimes what people do is they actually get jealous of the the twenty one percent, also the you know the strongest leg under them, and that's obviously totally the wrong thing to do, because you you should be very pleased you've got a very strong leg, because that then helps you towards then getting up to the higher levels on there. So it's you know it's embracing what's happened if it happens to you. But also at the same time, obviously building outside as well. Yeah, definitely. And I'll say, guys, if you've got a really strong max leg that's killing your commission, don't be jealous. Don't be envious. Be thankful because you know you've got a very strong foundation in your business. It just means you need to build outside and that will release as, the commission. As I said at the start of this as well, in FM, we don't have breakaways. You know, I've, I've done, you know, analyzed different marketing plans in the past from other companies where they have breakaways. Where someone, if they get to a high level, high level, you know, get to a higher level, you sort of thing, you've only got a few months and you've lost them. That never happens with FM. So that you know, even if someone, even if you just sold some bits for yourself, and the person you personally introduced reached Onyx Star, you know, <laughs> they're still part of your team, and you've you've still got unlimited time to obviously build the outside structure you need to start moving up to those levels yourself.
Can I just clarify that? I just want to repeat that because I think that was very, very important. You're saying that in other networking or marketing plans you've studied of other companies. In some other companies, yeah. You, reach, have, that, you have a rising star that's 21% or Pearl, and you only have that rising star for a few months and then they take it off. If, if you didn't go ahead of them, if you didn't reach a high level, yeah. Some companies, not so many now, um, have breakaways. A lot of companies got rid of them. Uh, but yeah, some companies do have breakaways like that. Wow, so I, thought, I suppose uh, that's a thank God FM does their marketing plan as such. Uh, yeah. I think I might, my, my max that would have broken away a long time from me. So <laughs> there we go. Now, Mr. Roy Strong, this is the question I'm most excited about. And welcome aboard. I've got a lot of people on tonight. Please post any questions, any chats on the, on the chatting group. Um, later on, I'll raise some hands or mute some mics. We're getting some fine golden nuggets here from Roy Strong. It's difficult to get this man at conferences, especially now he's having a star. He's going to, you know, the, the amount of money he's earning every month, he might have a team of bodyguards around him. We may not be able <laughs> to speak to him anymore. You know, we might have to, you know, book an appointment or, or, or go through you later or, you know, through, through his management team. Roy, when you first hit Amethyst Star, I mean, when you first hit Jasper and you looked at your commission, you must have thought, my gosh, all yeah, that I went through, <laughs> this was worth it. But when you yeah. hit Amethyst Star, what did you, and you looked at your commission, what did you think? What did you say? I'm not going to ask uh, you. How much you mean was. after I stopped jumping up and down in the air? <laughs> yes. I'm not going to ask you how much it was, but I know it's, um, it's a yearly salary. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, it, it, it was amazing. You know, it's amazing money. Uh, both, both the Jasper and the, the Amherst um, Star. And obviously, there's still three more levels above that within the you know, existing plan on there. So it's, it's life changing money at those levels. And, but it, you know, you only get there by helping other people to get there. So by, you know, helping your leaders to move up through, obviously initially through the Magnolia and then through the Orchid programs is the, is the way you get to the star levels on it. So it's, it's been a, you know, it's a massive team effort. You know, myself and your leader, we worked on, you know, planning what we were going to do on it. But it's, a, it's a, you know, the whole team was involved in other they didn't they didn't actually know what we were, we were aiming towards it was kept, one of the best kept secrets ever in fm um for the jasper star part certainly on there uh, but we knew the impact as well it would have you know we've seen a massive growth this year and so you know the whole string of leaders that came out during the autumn absolutely incredible so you know what i've got can't remember the totals now for the uk overall um, but astronomical number of new powers. <laughs> wow. uh, you know, 11 new am amaranths, and obviously the golden and diamond and, you know, stars as well. So it's, it, it's not just us reaching it, it's also obviously everybody, you know, moving up. Wow. Mr. Roy Strong, you are a very successful networker, entrepreneur, and a very wealthy man within this company. I am sure you must remember the times when you spoke to people about this opportunity and um, people may not have taken you seriously. They may have laughed it off or thought, you know, this is just for dreamers. And you must have felt very um, disheartened over many, many, many times. Um, was there any time, what, difficulty, what difficulties did you face, um, Roy? And was there any time you, had, you felt like you wanted to quit? I never got disheartened when people said that it won't work because I knew it would. Um, my belief in network marketing before FM was already there. So I knew, you know, this type of business works very well. So if people, you know, said it won't work, like, okay, that's their choice, <laughs> you know. And I've still got, you know, I've still got people now where, I, you know, I'm now driving my third Mercedes with the company. And I pull up with someone's driveway. And they still say, oh, that network marketing, that, that never worked. <laughs> Look, you, you're right. <laughs> so there's always going to be people that don't like networking and won't join it. Well, they, you know, that's up to them. But it's, you've got to have that belief yourself. You know, it's got to be a concrete belief. And old, you know, obviously Eric Rory in particular talks a lot about this. Is you've got to have that concrete belief that it, it will work. The network marketing works. And, it, it, you know, it's it not just in FM, but in other companies as well. There's plenty of examples around the world. You know, it's a hugely successful profession now. So when you get people say it won't work, well, okay, you know, let them join you later on. 
But no, we've all had, you know, we've all had times at points where we've thought to ourselves, this is really, really tough. Um, there's one year in particular I remember quite clearly, probably the toughest, I would say probably the toughest year, you know, even tougher than when we had when we first started. The toughest year, I think, was when the UK, the people in the UK started to use their mobile phone to do virtually everything online. You know, it was about three years ago or so. And at the time, the company hadn't caught up. It was very hard to do anything on the FM website on the phone. Uh, and that carried on for the best part of a year. So it's very hard to register people. And I would say that was, that was the toughest time because it was so frustrating. And, you know, obviously I was working behind the scenes to get that sorted out. But it, that, that was difficult. That was a very, very difficult year uh, when you're trying to register people and, you know, you're, you're struggling on your own phone and they're all their phone, you know, you're trying to help them out, you know, try this one and see if that works. So, <laughs> so that, that made it very difficult. Um, but no, I, I, I don't think it's been any point where I thought to myself I'm going to quit because uh, I knew we'd overcome these obstacles. They, they're challenging at the time, but you just keep going with it. Because the, the alternative is doing nothing, you know? And that, that's not an alternative I think none of us on this platform would like. Um, right, no. I love your attitude. I love your, your just get on with it. Um, I love um, you really are saying that, you know, just don't take these things personally when someone says not interested or they don't believe what, what you're saying. And you, just to be, just be quite indifferent. To yeah, and also a lot of times people are saying it because they're too lazy to do it themselves. So they're trying to pull you down to justify the fact they're not, you know, willing to put any work into anything. So, oh, and you all, you know, always, whatever level you are in the business, you always can get people who are jealous. You yes. always can get people where they'd rather pour other people down rather than try and build up. And it happens, you know, in any profession, it happens in any network marketing company. Uh, so you've got to be prepared for that. And yeah, I've had, you know, loads of people try and pull me down at different stages, without, you know, without a doubt. But you just keep on going. You think, yeah, forget about them. And, you know, <laughs> it, it, I always think you've always got to be positive, like you're exactly like you are yourself fits on there. And if you've got negative people in your life, basically, I would cut them out completely, you know, or certainly reduce down the amount of time you give them. Yes. Yeah. I think they're wise words, Roy. And it basically, what it says to us, doesn't matter if you're 3%, 6%, 9%, whether you've got a Peugeot or not, whether you've got a Mercedes or not, it doesn't matter where you are. At the end of the day, this is a fabulous opportunity, a fabulous business. And you don't, if you haven't got those things, you shouldn't worry that, oh, I need to have the car before I go and show somebody, oh. or I need to be earning this amount because you're an amethyst star and if you're showing them your mercedes in their driveway and they still don't believe you <laughs> then ask those who may not have mercedes we shouldn't worry about it and just present it as it is you know because people will always be skeptical regardless yeah i would say don't talk about the things like the you know to someone when they're looking at the business don't talk so much about the high levels don't talk so much about mercedes or the holidays unless they're specifically unless that's their pain you've identified so if you know if they've said to you, oh, God, my car's broken down, I really need a car, and then you're talking about the business, then obviously tell them more about the car program. Or if they, you know, the reason why you're speaking to me is because they can't afford a holiday this year, then you talk more about the Maldives, et cetera. But the majority of people, when they're looking at the business, are not looking at those higher levels. The majority of people you're speaking to about the business will be looking to earn, and this has been shown in statistics, are looking to earn roughly about £200 extra a month. And that's across the network marketing profession. When people are looking at joining a network marketing company, that's what they're looking to earn as an extra to what else they're doing. So you need to show people how to get that initial money. And obviously that comes through retail sales. And it also comes from, as we said you know, earlier on in the Zoom, it's about maximizing those early incentives. And if you can show people to do that, that's what people want to know about. And if you can help them to do that, then you've shown them it works. And once you've shown them it works, they're more likely to stay in it, and they're more likely to listen to you as you help them through the further levels. I think you're definitely right, Roy. You know, it's just about keeping things, you know, not being too over extravagant, keeping it basic, and try and fit, 
you know, that's why, that's why when you meet somebody new, you ask questions, what is it yeah. that interested you? What were you looking for? And through those answers, then you know, okay, the person's just looking just for a little bit of extra income or they're looking just to replace a bill, whatever. You can tailor make the business to whatever came out of that conversation by asking questions. And I would say, always tell your own story on there. You know, <clears throat> I've seen before where people put up things about myself, about Irina. The people you're speaking to business don't want to know about us. They want to know about you. So it's, it's very much, if I, you know, tell your own story when you're speaking to someone about the business because that, that's what they want to know about. And that, that way they're also going to be thinking, right, I'm following in this, you know, man or this woman's footsteps. No, definitely. Um, that's sound advice, Roy. And thank you um, so much for that. I'm going to ask you um, one, uh, a very key question. What, what common mistakes should we avoid as network marketers in FM? What, what sort of common mistakes should we avoid? I think to, we need to remember about all the products we do. Obviously, a lot of people focus initially when they first join on perfumes, or increasingly now we get some join work for the, the makeup and then look at the other products. But it is to remember all the products that we do. And this time of year, as we approach January, is the most important time of the year to remember the fact we've got what, 800 odd products now that we sell. Because you, your customers are very likely to be interested in more than just the, the you know, fragrances or whatever you're leading with on there. This, this year, what's made a big difference is the combined catalogue. Because if you're showing the catalogue to people or you're showing them in your web shop, then they're going to see some of the other products that we do. And because of that, what we're noticing now is customers are buying much more wide range of products. Whereas before, I think people often were just showing them the fragrance catalog. And not, not now that we do teas, coffees, household products, etc. you know, Nutricode. So you need to be showing people all the products that we do and let people choose themselves what they want to buy from you. Rather than just telling them about one product. So that's a common mistake that we've all made right now at different times. When someone joins the business or when you're just talking to someone about the business, again, you need to find out what they actually want rather than thinking to yourself, right, oh, this person, you know, this person can be a superstar or whatever. Uh, it's not, it's, it's, you know, don't ever prejudge what someone's going to do. With it. Every, everybody that joins has got potential to do a lot with the business. And they've also got potential to introduce someone who could do a lot with the business. So ne again, never just look at the people you personally introduce to the business. You know, as you know yourself, sometimes the people you personally introduce, they join because just because they like you. You know, like me, you're like you're like all chat fits, and people will think, okay, yes, join this guy. Uh, but they may join because of you rather than because of them. And it, I would say very much look to the low levels, you know, in the business on there, and look to see the you know sort of the leaders, the people who will develop through. Um, on there, I've got on the. Actually, I've just seen we've got Justina on the call. Um, Justina, um, a golden orchid within the business, very successful, uh, and she's actually on my thirteenth level in the business. Um, so it's not just the people on, on that, you know those early levels. I see we've got Leanne as well, um, and you know, very fast and you know a leader building up, developing a fantastic team in there, and obviously the, the queen of the parties on there. Again, very deep, le you know, levels within the within the team. So it's it's it, you know it, it's not always going to be the people you personally introduce that are going to be the best people within your team. And it's often not the case, you know, it's very seldom the case, um, but they are. Well, thank you, Roy. I think I think you know that that was very um, pertinent. You know, especially you know when you meet someone. I've I've often made that mistake as well. Um, you meet someone. They get attached, may not, not necessarily, they like the business, but they like you. And then you place them somewhere else in the team. <laughs> and you, you may not explain it in that way. And, you know, sometimes they just want that personal relationship. So I think if you have somebody that you personally sponsored, but you want to place them somewhere in your team to maximize your leg, have a three-way meeting with the person you're going to put them under. So they also share that relationship. It is very difficult to do that, to be honest. Um, I, I would say look towards additional numbers. You know, obviously, if people from 9% onwards can get additional numbers within the business. Um, so, if you've got someone where they particularly want to, you know, be under, directly under you somewhere, um, then obviously the additional numbers come into play, come into play for that. 
on there. I, I was more thinking about the fact of, as you, you know, the people you introduce in the search, that to not just look at them as the most likely people to be your future orchids and future stars, because it may well be the people, you know, that they introduce and they introduce and they introduce, et cetera, that may end up emerging as the, you know, the, the superstars within your team. Yeah, definitely. You're definitely right. Sometimes the, you know, it's not just your first line. The superstars can be way, way deep in your structure. So it's definitely worth, you know, looking at everyone in your team. Brilliant. So, Roy, what tips and advice can you share with us all? You know, with all of us here, we're just waiting here on, you know, we're waiting on you, hanging on your every word. And what, what tips and advice can you share with us that can help us develop our leaders, support our business partners to break the glass ceiling, reach those higher levels that we all want to attain to. As you do, you know, grow, grow a larger team, you get the challenge then of trying to support them. And I would say make the most of social media to support your teams, as I know you're, you're doing on there, because it's, if you can, you know, let people, let a lot of people have the same message at the same time, that makes a big difference. Obviously, you know, do a lot on sort of like Zooms, Facebook, you know, Facebook Live and videos. Again, people like watching videos more these days than they do reading things, you know. It's going with the technology that's in place. And obviously that helps a lot with the international side. We've now got FM World Distribution, which, you know, is making a massive difference, making it a lot easier um, to build internationally than we've ever had before. And if you are looking to build international, then always st start with your home country that you're in at the moment. Yeah. Build there. And then through the people you're building there is the way you're building internationally with it. Because people have different contacts in different countries. And that's the way, you know, I've developed the international side of things. I I've never ever thought to myself, right, I'm going to go and, you know, just sign up a load of people in Australia or wherever, <laughs> you know, because I've, I've, you know, I've never been to Australia. I don't, I don't you know, I, I know people now for FM in Australia, but I didn't know anybody so, sort of socially in Australia. So, you, but I've got, a you know, I've got a, a big team in Australia. So it's, it, it, but it didn't come from thinking about sponsoring someone there. It came from people in the UK joining and them having contact, or, they, you know, someone joining and joining and joining and someone having contact in that other country. Because only the people living in that country will not have the local knowledge. And the people who, have, you know, have got contact over here with that country, yeah, will, will know how to work best with the people in that country and also to, to learn the incentives that apply to that particular country. Yeah, I think that's a thing to do. And, you know, as I've said earlier on, I would say number one thing is definitely to keep positive. You know, you'll uh, you have loads of things thrown at you over the years. You know, we all have in the business. But it's to keep smiling, keep positive, and just keep on going. Ignore all the crap that goes on out here sometimes, you know. Yeah, definitely, um, you know, that, that's wonderful, Roy. And, you know... So you heard it from the man himself. We've got to keep positive. You know, we've got to build, start with your home country. Um, wonderful. Is there anything else, Roy? Are you keeping anything else from us? Is there anything <laughs> you can give us? We want more. We want more, Roy. Tell us the secret. What's the secret, Roy? Is there, is there a secret, Roy? <laughs> oh, you know, the, the secret is really what we said on stage at the UK conference, is the fact that two heads are better than one. So if you can find someone to work with and bounce ideas off each other, that makes a huge difference without a shadow of a doubt. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not a modest person. I count myself as very bright. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I know when I was doing things just myself, th there's things I was doing wrong. And when you've got someone else helping you with it and they're looking at things and thinking, now, even, th even simple things like sending out a, an email broadcast to the team, you know? I'll, 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 I'll write something and think, right, I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to send. And then I'll say to you, Lisa, what do you think of this? And she'll say, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and then we'll come up with, with you know, a better way of, uh, of phrasing it, et cetera, on there. So we help, it, you know, we help each other, we bounce ideas off each other, and that, that helps a lot because 
it means the person makes it more enjoyable, you know, when you're doing the business. But it, it just means that you know you're you're not just sort of tunnel focused on what you're the way you're doing things. You've got sort of, you know influence from someone else as well to help you and guide you to think right. Okay, it might be a better way of doing this. So two brains work brilliantly um, on it. I would suggest everybody to you know find someone within you know within your team ideally to work with like that. Um, I know again we've got I think Leanne's still on the call. Um, we've got, you know, within the team, we've got Leanne and Lindsay, who are in different parts of the team, but work actually brilliantly together. And, you know, their friendship has helped them both to sort of move up through, you know, the, the plan. And, that, you know, it's, it's fantastic to see that sort of thing. So, you know, like you're, you're, you're obviously yourself and Dennis as well, you know, <laughs> um, you, you're really getting, in, you know, really involved and you're, you know, sharing ideas with each other. That's, I would say that makes a huge difference. Wow. And I think definitely you're right. Partnerships, friends in the business, collaborators, um, having, especially having people who come on board at a later stage in the business with all the technology, they come with fresh eyes, you know, because, you know, us who've been in the game for some time, we're, we're, we're kind of going along with what we know that works well. Yeah, you, maybe you, in a bit of cruise control. Same, same way. Um, and yeah, we've, we've, you know, the last seven years, you would have seen so many changes bits in the way things are done. And it will, you know, seven years time again, things will change a lot. In there, so it's it's always being prepared to adapt and change. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's harder for us sometimes than it is for people when they're first coming into the business. Mm -hmm. there, but, you know, it's a classic example of it. Is a classic example of sort of positivity bit as well. I think on this it is obviously we had on the um, luxury range. We have some we had some changes. Some the prices increased. Also, the points have increased a lot on there. And, you know, what I said to people at the time was, yeah, this has happened, you know, the first price increase we've had for ages on there. Um, but you've got, to put, you've got to look at it positively. And you've got to look, obviously, at the increased points. And what you've also got to think about is the people joining the business tomorrow don't know anything about the old price. So they only know about the price you've got now on it. And the same for your customers, you know? So it, it, whatever happens, it's, it's always a case of just thinking, right, this is the way it is, yeah, and maximising that. Oh, wonderful. Thank and you, Mr. One Lee. last tip. Just no, I mean, the floor is yours. The floor is yours. <laughs> um, well, we're talking about the points on the Obviously, the points on the luxuries are brilliant. And look, look towards trying to get more customers and promoting the products that have got the very high points. So things like Nutricode, things like the Utique, fragrances and the Utique face and hair oil. You know, I think the Utique face oil in particular is one of the best products we've, we've got full stop. And obviously the hair lab now as well. You know, all those products have great points attached to them. And uh, it's noticeable where you've got teams that are promoting those, you know, they're, they're really building those points up because that's, it makes sense. If you're selling Utique fragrance, you know, for 250 points, as opposed to a pure fragrance of 34 points, then you, know, <laughs> you, you need to sell a lot less of UT to get there quickly than you do from, from a pure. So very much embrace the new products we've got in, you know, already, and obviously I, I, you know, I'm sure there's gonna be more, a lot more next year on there, and introduce your customers to those products. No, definitely, Roy, and you know, um, what, what can I say? Um, the sort of information, the golden nuggets you've given us, absolutely phenomenal. I'm going to look on there. Let's look at the chat. If you've got any questions for Roy, please chat. I'm going to scroll through, raise your hand or wave. Let me see what we've got here, Roy. We've got um, <laughs> uh, Adande, Adande Woodsley said, good day, guys. Hi, Adande. Um, Adam, Adam Dak said, um, chicken's about to start burning. So he's off. He's going <laughs> to make sure dinner's ready. Um, but um, Rebecca, um, Rebecca's got um, everyone's no is one step closer to a yes. And value the no's, they push you on. I'm proud to talk about the fact that I've got people on my team that have earned enough to have a good Christmas and treat their kids. And that's what a normal life is about. Um, so the same, thank you, Roy, wise words. And that is exactly right. That's what we're saying. It's what's, it's what's going to get people actually into the business when you talk about the, you know the people that have come in recently because that's what they want to know about they want to know people coming recently who are successful with the business 
and, and I'm sure I, I think majority of you on the call would have seen the opportunity video that we've got when we recorded it at the conference. And that is, you know, a, gr a group of people who all, you know, all, well, most of the majority of them are all people who joined within this last year who were talking about their success from the early levels of the business and from the incentives. And people relate a lot more to that than they do when they, you know, people talk about my success or whatever. So it, it's much better to show someone that and they think, okay, yeah, I could, I could join and this could happen to me. Wow. They can, um, they can see it because they can see that immediate. Yeah, definitely. It's more yeah. tangible when they have someone yeah. fairly close to them. Um, Leanne Dixon, your, your rising star Pearl Orchid says, never give up. Five years in the business and I love it. Um, Amina, Timothy says, thank you, Roy, for your advice. Um, absolutely brilliant. And Rebecca said, exactly, keep it real. So we're keeping it real here, Roy. And on behalf of everybody here, I'm just going to scroll through the gallery in case somebody's waving their hand. I would like to say, Mr. Roy Strong, congratulations on a huge success. I'm looking at everyone's faces there. Sorry, there's, no, there's nowhere to hide, guys. I can see you all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people are clapping there. You know, Justina, Pam is here. We've got a lot of um, aspiring um, leader stars. We've, we've got a lot of orchids on here as well. And basically, you know, success breeds success. Um, if you want to be successful, you need to be around successful people. You need to learn from those who've been doing it and are doing it well and are reaching the top. I mean, my goodness, Roy, you're three stars away from the top. I mean, you, you're gone. You're going to have a helicopter soon. My goodness. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. So I'm just looking on here. Um, everyone looks happy. So thank you again, everybody. Um, really appreciate this. Thank you for spending your time. Now I'm, you know, I'm not playing here. You know, I'm, I'm Mr. Interviewer here, Mr. Motivator. So straight after this at 11 o'clock, I'm going to be having an exclusive interview with Clifton Ryan, Amaranth Orchid from Trinidad and Tobago. So for those who are building internationally, with world distribution is something that you don't want to miss because the sort of challenges and hurdles they had to build from the Caribbean to reach Amherst Org is absolutely incredible. So do join me if you're able to for 11 o'clock for another exclusive. Um, Mr. Roy Strong, thank you very much. You are an amazing example. You're a wonderful night. I couldn't think of a nicer guy. And I congratulate you deserve every success. I've got my chat flashing. Let's see who's there. Okay, is it? Sorry, um, <laughs> I'm 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 into, I'm not in the, I'm not in the UK, so I mean, um, Clifton's going to be at eight o'clock, so he's going to be on in, in ten minutes. So <laughs> someone's asking, why did you say eleven? I mean, eleven o'clock my time. So um, <laughs> I thought it was quite late like too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm in, I'm in Qatar in the Middle East, so that's why I'm, I'm three hours ahead of the UK. So that's what I meant. Um, so Roy, I just want to congratulate you again on behalf of myself and all the business partners here. Wonderful success. You're aspiring others. You're helping us to believe. Um, you're helping us all to be strong. And, you know, your, your motivation is our motivation. And we are following your every footstep. So thank you again. And wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. And I'll see you next on our next exclusive. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.